There's six minutes. Thank you very much, presiding officer. I'm a North Lanarkshire resident, and I was a councillor there from 20, 2007 to 2011. And as such, I was very familiar with the Gaelic education medium schools in the area. The delivery model there has been so successful in nurturing Gaelic in my community, and I was glad to hear Mr Fairley mention it in his speech as well. I was also delighted to visit Eileen a few years ago and meet former head teacher in her community, Cathy Johnson. The strength of Gaelic language there is evident in song and poetry, as well as at the supermarket when I, I was maybe buying a little uh, brucladi. Presiding officer, it is a love of the sangs and the poems that I would like to focus on today. I want to commend all of my colleagues speaking in Gaelic, Scots and Doric today. I don't have their flair or their experience. I was a wee lass in Lanarkshire and Liz Lockhead's Scots and English poem Bairns Sang speaks to my experience. It was January, a gay drich day, the first day I went to the school. So my mum had me up in my good navy blue nap coat with a red tartan hood, barreled a scarf around my neck and put on my pixie and my pokies. It was that bitter. She said, no, you'll no starve. She gave me a wee kiss and a kid on scalp on the bum and sent me across the playground to the place I'd learned to say. It was January and a really dismal day, the first day I went to school. I listened to the comments about prescription and teaching Scots language. But Liz Lockhead is from Lanarkshire. She went to Newt Hill Primary in my uh, colleague Stephanie's constituency and went to DL High School in Motherwell. And I think it would be a real shame if the young people there weren't able to enjoy her poems or indeed her incredible translation of Euripides' Medea that was such a success at the Edinburgh Festival just this year. But my experience was the experience of so many of us and mother tongue was not correct, appropriate, valued or tolerated. I hope that we have moved on from telling Wayne's that rang at every turn. Especially with the wealth of literature and songs at their fingertips today. And fingertip aptly reminds me of my own primary rendition of the Sayre Finger. A few years ago, I was delighted to attend the Scots Language Awards and see literature such as Nip Nebs, written by Susie Briggs and illustrated by Ruthie Redden, telling the story of Jack Frost in Scots celebrated. And wonderful translations. And for doubters, translation means the process of expressing the sense of words or text in another language. Matthew Fitt translated children's classics such as Roald Dahl's Twits into the Egypts. And his works with Scots, James, uh, Scots writer James Robertson have been um, celebrated for their depth and their um, knowledge of Scots. But it was Billy Kay's book, The Mother Tongue, that was a game changer for me. It stripped away that Scottish cringe and the notion that the words that resonated with me, they were acceptable, they were appropriate and they were evocative in a way that truly speaks to my soul, especially in poetry and songs. At the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, the world was enthralled at the beautiful rendition of Hamish Henderson's Freedom Come All Ye by Pazema Machitska. Over one billion people saw that performance. A contemporary song written in Scots, it describes the wind of change blowing through Scotland and the world, sweeping away exploitation and imperialism. It extols Scottish values but it's when you hear the Scots, I swear you feel that wind. Rock the wind in a clear day's dawning, blows the clouds, heels their gaudy o'er the bay, but there's ne'er no a rock wind blowing through the great glen of the world today. Presiding officer, Scots is recognised as meeting the European Charter of, for Regional and Minority Languages. And languages, remember, is a human right. Language is mentioned in many of the articles of human rights, in justice, education and children's rights. It is the culture that defines people. It is inherent to identity and it shouldn't be rolled out once a year for Burns Night. Though Burns is indisputably a phenomenon. We've talked about the economy and tourism and how we can support our languages 
But Robert Burns and the Scottish Economy is a groundbreaking study that was led by Murray Pittock for the University of Glasgow. And indeed, I should mention my colleague, Joan McAlmine, for her exemplary work in this area. An estimated 9.5 million people attend Burns suppers every year. And it puts the, overall the report puts the overall annual value of Burns' Scottish economy at £203 million, with a further £139 million contributed to the value of Scotland itself, the brand. Air tourism includes new visitor facilities, Burns-related festivals and branded products. And cultural tourism in particular is highly beneficial to the economy. Robert Burns' birthplace museum in Alloway is second only to Shakespeare's birthplace in visitor numbers in the UK. A Scots language bill will underpin this language and its potential in Scotland. William McIlvanny opined that Scotland is a mongrel nation. Air Scots language reflects that with influences, as mentioned by my colleagues, from all over our history, our battles, invasions, our tribes, Words from Latin, Danish, French, Welsh, to name but a few, including Norse, as mentioned by my colleague. But the language of our mongrel nation does not mean it's doggerel, as Burns was once churlishly described by Jeremy Paxman. By way of evidence, I will finish with a bird's quote in education. A set of dull, conceited hashes confuse their bairns in college classes. They gang eye sticks and come out asses. Give me I spark on nature's fire. That's other learning I desire. Thank you, President Officer.